amazing. Wow. Troy Savon, he's coming in. He's coming in. You're going to talk to him. You're going to hear from him. <laughs> this is great. That was beautiful. Come on in. Troy Savon wow. is here. I think that is honestly the most nervous I've ever been in my entire life. Were you really nervous? <laughs> yeah. Were you nervous? I'm like shaking like a leaf right now. <laughs> really? Let me see your hand. Oh. Oh, cool. yeah. This is, I've never done anything like live before. It was just terrifying. I mean, I've done like live shows. Well, yeah, you've done many shows. I was just on tour, but not like radio stuff and not with you. This is awesome. Thank you. Don't Bye. be nervous. No, you should be very nervous. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna, we're going to ask the most embarrassing questions and just rip you to shreds. Cool. I'm, I'm ready. The volume for your, uh, your your headphones right down there. Oh, thank you. Troy, uh, leading up to this interview, I got to tell you, I had heard of your music a long time ago. I mean, I say a long time ago, months and months ago. Yeah. And I, and I mentioned it to uh, several of our guys. I said, we've got to see if we can get Troy Savon in here. Well, he's not from here. We, 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 we can't afford to fly him here. <laughs> I mean, you're, uh, you're originally, you were born and raised, you were born in South Africa? Yeah. And then yeah. when did you move to Australia? I was two. So I've lived in Australia like my entire life pretty much in Perth. And then I started like traveling pretty much all the time like a year ago. Right. Um, what was it? Was it someone in your family or someone in your circle that recognized this talent, this gift you have. I mean, and w how did you start performing for other people? Where did that come from? So the first people to realize, I guess, were my parents, because I used to, we had a computer that only had one album on it, and it was a Madonna album. It was the one with like a prayer on it. I don't know what the album was called. Right. And I, at like the age of six or whatever, learned how to use the computer. And so I used to play like a prayer over and over again and like run around downstairs singing the song. And my parents said that they couldn't tell if it was Madonna singing or if it was me singing. Oh. And that's how they knew that I could sing. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a, it's, a nice, it's a nice compliment. Yeah. yeah so I, I was just like really good at Madonna impersonations, I guess, when I was like six years old. And then I just haven't really stopped since then. I started um, training and I used to do like corporate events and stuff when I was like a little kid and then um, kind of made music more personal again and started songwriting probably when I was like 14 or 15, just in my bedroom though. I didn't even realize necessarily that it was like songwriting. I was just writing songs without thinking about it. You know what I mean? Well, that's that's, that's the best, most natural way to do yeah. it. You don't yeah. know what it is. It's just something you do. Yeah. And then, it's a song. It's <laughs> unbelievable. Yeah. And then um, one of the songs that I wrote, I uploaded to YouTube and that's the one that got me signed. Wow. So, I mean, uh, the la latest count we had when we wrote up the script today was like 5 million YouTube subscribers. Is it is it is it more than that now? I don't do know. Do you keep an eye on it? I I have kept an eye on it in the, like, in the past. I don't check it too often. I think you can get like really sucked into all of that stuff if you get too like numbersy, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. I try not to, you know, look in, look into it too much. I just want to like, you know, focus on, I guess, trying to make good stuff for everyone and keep everyone entertained. But, but you guys come in. Well, you, well, you, all of your posses out there, yeah. we should My, invite them in. <laughs> Connor, come in. You guys come in. I know, I feel like it's like, we have a whole, they're in the, another room. Oh, 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 we fell in. Connor fell into the room. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, you know, uh, you were, you were raised in, uh, a time where YouTube and you know the you know, the web is there for you to get your music out there and get discovered and look right. at what happened. I mean, and you stay in communication with, on Twitter stuff like that with yeah. with your fans. Yeah, how important? Like, how important is that to you? It's I mean it's such a huge part of my life. It has been you know I got Twitter and YouTube and stuff when I was I think like twelve and now I'm twenty. So I don't really remember what it was like to not have that stuff and and to not have that like you know, community to constantly like talk to. I always say, I think the moment where I realized that I was like quite dependent on it was when I was like alone in, I think I was in London and I didn't know anyone there or anything like that. And I was feeling a little sorry for myself. And mm -hmm. I went onto my Twitter and I started talking to everyone and it like immediately I felt completely like, you know, like I had, a, you know, a few friends online. And um, yeah, it's just, I, I just, I really value that connection so much. And I, I, I try and, you know, speak to them like every day and, just kind of keep them up to date, and I'm just so thankful that everyone is so supportive of everything that I'm doing. Well, did, they are. Didn't Taylor Swift tweet you, and you like totally freaked out? I did totally freak out, and <laughs> yeah, she, yeah. Um, I was like walking home. It was like 1 a.m., and um, I I was with a friend, and he was like, "Troy, check your Twitter," and my heart sank because I had no idea what it was. <laughs> Literally no idea. I was like, "Who died?" I, a million things started running right. through my head, but um, and then I saw it was Taylor Swift, and that was like the wow. ultimate. The ultimate thing Can that you could imagine. Yeah. You know, uh, Troy Savon is here. He's just turning us on, and uh, he just performed. And uh, Youth is the single that's out from his album Blue Neighborhood, and the album is out today. Today's the it's day. out today. Yay! 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 Right. That's cool. 
in reading uh, what your fans have to say on Twitter mm -hmm. leading up to this interview. By the way, what's our hashtag today? Hashtag is Troy, Troy on Elvis. Elvis. Troy on Elvis. T R O Y E on Elvis. Which will screw everyone up because uh, you have an E on Troy. <laughs> yeah. We're going to miss some people on that, but it's okay. But the, what your fans were saying was just so. I, if I was you, I'd be just on another cloud right now. On, I another totally plan. am. I really, really am. I mean, uh, what is it about your lyrics? If you can describe it, that is resonating with so many people, especially the youth around the world who are your fans. There's something you're saying that's ringing a bell with them. What is it? I really don't know. I mean, I, I, it could be. I guess I'm, you know, I'm one of them. I'm like, I'm only 20, and I'm, you know, experiencing a lot of things for the first time. And and I turned to, you know, writing this album when I was like, you know, experiencing being away from my family for the first time and moving away and stuff like that. And um, just a bunch of, you know, first experiences that I think a lot of people my age are probably going through. And I didn't really write this album with the with the thought process that it was going to be released. You know, I just, I wrote it for myself and I wrote it to kind of, um, just because I, I love songwriting and I kind of need to songwrite just, you know, for personal reasons. And so I was just writing and, and I think that hopefully it's kind of the honesty that, that people are connecting so with. That's what it is. It is an honesty. Hope it so. really is. Well, that's... You know, we had Gwen Stefani on here yesterday. Oh, cool. And you know, she recently went through an awful breakup, a divorce, yeah. and it was in the press. And she is at a fantastic song performing and writing time of her life because she just had this jolting shift in her life. Mm -hmm. And everything she's singing about is from the heart, even though it's it's painful stuff. Yeah. But people, her fans, they see that honesty. They feel her heart coming out through her voice. Right. And that's what they're doing with you. And they're relating. Like for youth, for instance. You're looking at the words, Bethany. Oh, yeah. It's a, well, let's quote Troy Sivan, <laughs> shall we? Um, you know, there's... I think every, you were talking, Elvis, during the break. Everybody in this room on this show, the reason that we all get along is because we none of us really fit in terribly well growing up, and we're all right. misfits in our own ways. And a lot of the things that you talk about are feeling confused, feeling like you don't necessarily belong, and we know a lot of... The majority of your fans, that resonates with them as well. Um, is it ever when you're performing these songs that you've written about these times in your life, is it ever difficult for you to go back to that place? Maybe it's something you wrote a while ago. You're in a different place yeah. now. We have to go back. Sometimes it's, it's hard in the writing as well. Cause sometimes I'll write like retrospectively. Um, and you know, just like write about a thing that I went through when I was like, you know, I've, I've got one song on the album called heaven. That's like about all of the questions that I ever asked myself when I was first starting to kind of come to terms with my sexuality. And, um, it was hard. It was like, you know, going back to that and, and thinking all of those really kind of scary thoughts again about, you know, just like family and friends and, and like religion and my career and whether I'm going to be able to have kids one day. Like these are all things that are, as like a 13 year old, I was like super, super stressed about. And I was like tense, you know, all the time because wow. those are things that were running through my head. And, um, and so, yeah, I mean, I hadn't really written about it. And then to go back and write Heaven when I'm now like, I think I was 19 or 20 when I wrote that song. And to have to kind of like revisit that and and vocalize it is um, it's not always easy. But then I mean, at the same time, it makes it so worth it when I go and I play these songs at a show, and I see people like having that moment. Maybe they're in that moment right now. Yeah, well, this know? song is their anthem. Yeah. It could be. You right. Know, let's talk about that. You you actually uh, came out to your fans on YouTube. It was a YouTube video, correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, you said that coming out was bigger than saying you were gay. You said it was liberating in every aspect of your life. Mm -hmm. Isn't it great? Yeah. And you know, <laughs> take from a 51-year-old gay guy yep. who, what, when did I start talking about being gay on the radio? Maybe four or five years ago? Yeah. First of all, congrats. That is so awesome. Well, I just want to say, it's well, like the coolest you. thing. I'm the oldest gayest person you'll ever meet. <laughs> That's the best. That's uh, so good. <laughs> you know what? I was never in the closet. I just didn't want to make it a part of the show. I didn't want right. this to turn into the Elvis Duran is gay show. Right. Because there was a time maybe when you were younger and before, where if you announced to the world in the mass media or whatever you were gay, it became about that and not about what you do every day. Totally. Now we do a show with a bunch of people that love each other. It just so happens one of the guys here is a gay guy. Mm -hmm. and I like that. When I came out, there was really no big fanfare or anything. And I love that. It was yeah. just, I merged into traffic. So when you came out, and now you know that a lot of your fans are wanting to have this dialogue with their family and their friends. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure you're getting a lot of feedback about that. And how do you feel? And what do you say to them when they're saying, thanks, Troy? I I get so much of it. And, um, you know, I always say that I think it's like the most important thing that I've ever done. You know, I think that 
music for me has always been like my number one love and, and entertaining people has always been my number one love. But, um, but, you know, if I had to quit it all tomorrow, having posted my coming out video, I, I would be completely fine with that just because I, you know, I know how it felt and, and I, I just really want to kind of try and help wherever I can. I had a really, I almost like started crying during a show the other day because um, basically I was doing the show. I won't say what city it is. It, it was in because I don't want to like out the person or whatever, but um, a girl started like looking at me and she was crying and I was singing just like in her general direction and I saw her like fiddling with something and she took out a poster and she opened the poster just at me and it said, you're the first person in the world to know that I'm a lesbian. And then she closed it and started <gasps> crying her eyes out. And I was like, well, now what am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to like finish this song oh, in front wow. of all of these people when it was just, it was amazing. You know, but hopefully you're giving her the courage to open that sign to other people. I hope so. And it's that kind of stuff that just, you know, makes everything really worth it. And as a songwriter, mm -hmm. I mean, it, coming out of the closet or announcing that whatever, it, it could be any major thing you announce in life. It's a liberating thing that happens in your life that gives you this new height where you can be more honest in your songwriting, in your mm -hmm. performing, in the way you look at life. It gives you, I'm assuming, this incredible courage that you wouldn't have had otherwise. Yeah. Why is there a light blanket? I have no idea. I'm having a seizure. <laughs> um, I mean, so, I mean, how has it changed the way you were approaching what you want to do with your life with music, knowing that you are free from those chains? Well, that's the thing is that it's just, it just completely opened up everything for me as I can, as an artist, because I can just write about boys and I can say he in my song and I can, you know, hopefully also like try my best to give a voice to people who in the past haven't had one, you know, or, and there was no like, you know, big like cover of People magazine that said I'm gay. It just happened, you know, and, and everyone was just super loving and accepting. And um, it's just, you know, now I can do whatever I want. And it so feels it opened amazing. up your life, therefore it opened up your music. 100%, yeah. If you're just turning us on, uh, wow, you've missed a lot, but you can listen to us on the replay channel on iHeartRadio. Troy Savon is here. You know, you're 20, well, you're 20 years old. Mm -hmm. You have all, you know, a whole life ahead of you. Me, I'm coming to a screeching halt any minute. No, 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 I, 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 I may die right here in front of you. Just like, <laughs> really, but I've had a great life. But what is it in life, and maybe this is a difficult question to answer, that you are so looking forward to, that you think you're looking forward to? I think it's that I just have no idea what my life is going to look like. Like, I have no idea if I'm going to be, like, 50 and single and touring and making albums or if I'm going to have, like, a family and a house in New Zealand. Or, you know, I, I just feel like there's so much that I want to do and there's so much that is, like, open to me at the moment and and i'm just really thankful to have been born now where um you know anyone can just like be themselves and completely still like live all of their dreams i just feel like there's literally nothing nothing in the way of um of anyone right now you know we can all go and just like kind of do our best and and try for what we want isn't that great some people That's would so say exciting. i have no focus i have no tenure plan uh, and it, it scares some people that they don't know where their life is going but what you just said it was so great is Life is going to be anything you decide it's right. going to be. And that's that's a great way to look at the future. The future is like, it's a big foggy forest. Bring it on. Sounds right. like fun, you know? Yeah, because also I think about the fact that like 10 years ago, even YouTube didn't exist. Or seven years ago, or eight years ago, or whatever it was. And so, um, and that's completely changed my life. So it's just, I feel like, I feel like I'd, I'd feel silly trying to predict what's going to happen because I just have no idea. Well, that's a dumb question. I'll never ask that question no. of anyone ever again. Shame on you. <laughs> Shame on me. What a, you know, after all these years, it seems like I would have known. No, don't ask that question. <laughs> no. People on Twitter uh, hashtagging Troy on Elvis, T-R-O-Y-E on Elvis. Uh, what was the first and last song you recorded on the album? The first one you recorded was? I think the first one I recorded for this album was um, a song called Bite. And the last one? The last one... Um, we were tinkering youth till like the last day. The one that I just saw you just performed. Yeah, we were just like playing around with it until like, yeah, until the very, very last day. Right. Now, which song on this album, difficult question to answer, is the the one, like the one that resonates most with you in your life right now? The one that resonates most with me. Answer me now. Don't um, think about it. <laughs> don't think about it. Just say yes. Go. I, I mean, there's so many, but um, I would say. The one that I'm most excited about right now is Youth, because I had no idea that the song was going to, um, you know, connect with people in the way that it has. I played it live for the first time before the album was out um, at a show like four weeks ago. And then I played, it was at my first show, and then I played my second show, and um, the crowd started like singing it back to me. And it was from like Twitter videos and stuff like that. And so that was really exciting. I, I, I was really, really excited by that. <laughs> I just want to tell you something. 
and I, everyone that I'm working with is going to agree with me because we, we've been doing this a long time. Uh, we've been we've interviewed everyone: the Stings, the Madonnas, the Elton Johns, the the Rihannas, the Madonnas. Did Gaga. I say Madonna twice? We, yeah. we, we, so we did her three times. Yeah. Gaga, every one of them. And when we have someone come in here, who we know in our heart of hearts is going to be huge and make a big impact on this business we already know it we know things that you don't know about you already don't say that no 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 no, no, no. <laughs> we do we do we know that and you know what and you'll leave here today and you'll forget that we said that no. and, and that's okay and don't forget us write us uh, letters yeah no but no you get it we we've interviewed people who didn't get it and we don't even know where they are anymore we've interviewed those who we saw it when they walked through the you know what i'm talking about yeah. right. you have it well, thank and you congratulations guys. to you. Are you still as nervous as you were when you walked in I've here? I've calmed down a little bit now. <laughs> it's 22 <laughs> City Tour sells out in 10 minutes. What does that tell you? Well, well there's that. <laughs> but you have it. Congratulations. Thank and you all guys the, so the, much. the people who will be using you to make money, congratulations <laughs> to them. You're going to make a lot of people very wealthy. <laughs> but but it, it, it's really, like these, these people at the record company, okay. you know, they're all a bunch of the bottom feeders. <laughs> but I, and they've been, you know, they've been my best friends for years. They, they all love them. But congratulations. Uh, again, Troy Savon, if you're just discovering him for the first time today, fine, get on the train. One last call, I know we're running late, but uh, then we'll take a break. And it's R, is that RJ? Hi. Hey, RJ. Say hi to Troy Savon. And, uh, hi, Troy. What's hi. going on? How are you? <laughs> Doing good. I just wanted to thank you for something you were talking about earlier, how you just use male pronouns in your songs, because that means so much to me. Uh, and, like, as dumb as it is, I can't listen to any of your songs without crying. Uh, that's something I had growing up, and it's a simple little, little thing, but just thank you. Thank you so much, RJ. Thanks. You're the best. <laughs> Isn't it weird we live in a world where we... Even though you're a guy and a guy, you have to... You, you, people had to record... About yeah, girls, because they're such a weird thing. Thank God yeah, those days are girl instead, so those weird. days are done. RJ, fabulous. Thanks for <laughs> Thank your you call. Thank you so much, RJ. Thank you so much. Thank you, Troy Savon. The album is Blue Neighborhood. It's available today. Uh, where are we on iTunes? Uh, do we have? A, is it too early to tell? Let's re let's run those numbers up. <laughs> well, I, I can say that the pre-order hit number one as soon as it went up. What, wow. Three weeks ago. All right, yeah. Troy Savon. In, in, in fifty countries. All right. Go, go away, you're going to make a lot of money off this game. <laughs> <laughs> Troy Savon, around the world, they're buying it. Maybe you should be buying it, too. It's an album full of music you need to hear from a guy you need to know. Blue Neighborhood is the album. And, of course, Youth performed here. You can hear it today all day on the iHeartRadio Elvis Duran replay channel. Yes, there it is. That's what it is. Nice. Congratulations. Thanks for coming Thank in. Thank you guys. Yeah. Troy Savon.